The Raiders are 1-0, and, and it does not feel anything but good because, honestly, going into this game, it was really a lot of unknown, a lot up in the air, and uh, as we kind of move forward throughout the rest of the season, uh, we're going to be watching a lot of different things. But you can't go forward without looking backward, or whatever Socrates said, uh, because today we're going over our Raiders standouts and fizz outs for the, uh, you know, against the Denver Broncos for week one. Um, so, obviously, everybody's got their winners and losers, risers and fallers, ours is standouts and fizz outs because players that stood up, and then also fizz outs because... Yeah, Pop. The players that fizzled out because, I mean, we think Pop is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It needs to replace all water. Please. Everybody, just everybody drink Pop. Never drink water again. I'm kidding, of course, but that's how good it, get, uh, that's how good it is. Let us know in the comment section what kind of Pop you drink. Is it Coke, Mountain Dew, Diet Dr. Thunder, whatever it is, let us know in the comment section down below. But, hey, let's get right into it. So, right off the bat, the first down, Jimmy G. Like, we all knew that Jimmy G was going to be a game manager at best for the Raiders, but he looked pretty good. Like, his offensive line made him look like an astronaut. He finished the game 20 of 26 for 200 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Now, the only bonehead move was that interception. Uh, he kind of threw it in the – and it was an interception in the red zone, nonetheless. He kind of threw it into traffic that got tipped up in the air. Kind of a nightmare scenario for the Raiders when they really needed some momentum. But overall, hey, Jimmy G, he was solid. He distributed the football well. Um, he stood in the pocket. He escaped pressure when he needed to. Uh, and he he did a lot of really good things. So, hey, Jimmy G, hats off to him in his first win, his first start as a Raider, getting it done there. Uh, next uh, standout, Jacoby Myers, finished the game, nine catches, 81 yards, and two touchdowns. You got to love how emotional that guy is catching a couple of touchdowns uh, in his first one, just getting up and immediately drawing an, uh, a, a kind of a taunting flag. But, hey, I don't care. I love it. I love the heart. Like I said, nine catches, 81 yards, and two touchdowns. You love to see it. The offensive line, clean sheet against the Broncos, against a D-line that's pretty good. So, uh, and I know there's been some things as far as injuries and all that, but overall, hey, Jimmy G stood in the pocket. Uh, for the most part, there was some running lanes for Josh Jacobs, not a ton, but, hey, the Raiders got it done. He didn't get sacked. It's a good day. Uh, Josh Jacobs, uh, speaking of, uh, eight, 19 carries, 48 yards, two and a half yards of carry. Not great at all, but did catch two passes for 23 yards. He's just really the heart and soul of this team. Like, you really load up to stop Josh Jacobs and you go from there. I loved, uh, I really did love it. Um, also, uh, a standout for me was. Uh, Max Crosby had that sack uh, continues to be this leader on this defense continues to bring it each and every day uh, and honestly I think that he just his impact is so undervalued with this team that it just he, he's just one of the most underrated football players in the league right now. Uh, Nate Hobbs now, usually when a corner has 12 tackles, there's kind of a concern. But overall, I mean, Nate Hobbs was everywhere. He played a good, solid game for the Raiders' defense. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a, uh, a kind of a uh, an example of what we're going to see throughout the, the really the entire season here. This guy leading in the secondary, trying to bring and, and staple a lot of this down. So overall, I really like to see uh, what I did from Nate Hobbs. Devontae Adams, six catches, 66 yards. Old, faithful, old, reliable, still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. No cap. Uh, and I think that really, with Jacoby Myers demanding a lot of attention now, uh, this is going to be a really fun Raiders offense. And Jimmy G, with his protection, with a good running game, uh, let's do this thing, baby. Uh, uh, Jacoby Bennett, now again. When a corner has seven tackles, usually it's not a good thing. But Jacorian Bennett uh, usually didn't get burned. It looked like he was pretty good in coverage the entire day. PFF is still coming out with their grades and all that stuff. But uh, I really like what I saw from Jacorian Bennett and the Raiders secondary, really as a whole. Uh, Jerry Tillery had that sack, also played well, uh, really along the rotation. We'll talk about that in just a second. But overall, uh, uh, Jerry Tillery had a sack. Uh, Max Crosby had a sack. It's good and uh, a lot of fun to see somebody out there than Max Crosby getting a sack. So that was really good. Also really like the D-line rotation. So from Tyree Wilson, uh, we'll get to him, uh, as well as uh, Jerry Tillery, uh, Malcolm Coons, Ma Max Crosby. All these guys were getting in. I love the fact that this Raiders defense was just every man uh, is going out there and doing their thing. Uh, and I really felt like this was a solid showing uh, from the coaching staff in order to keep players fresh, but also uh, just see what you got in some of these other guys. Uh, Robert Splane did miss a tackle there early in the game uh, for the run game, but uh, uh, overall, I mean, he had finished the game with five tackles. He was all over the place uh, in a lot of different ways, and uh, the Raiders allowed under 100 rushing yards against a team that, hey, they're going to try to run the football, so you love the fact that they were going in there. Uh, that D-line did their job. Robert Splane did his job. You love to see it. Uh, Divine Diablo also, uh, to me, is a standout in this game. Again, uh, I know that there is uh, there's a lot of things left on the table to be liked about Divine Diablo. Nine tackles, though, against the Broncos. He was pretty solid. Had that really nice pass breakup in the red zone. Uh, yeah, he played a solid game all around as well. Uh, Austin Hooper. 
uh, caught that pass in crunch time for a 20 yard gain. Uh, that was huge for the Raiders in a time that they really needed it. So, uh, you know, I know we're probably missing anybody. Uh, we're missing some people. Let us know what you guys, uh, who stood out for you guys. Uh, but as far as fizz outs, man, the penalties, the penalties were tough. And I understand that like, first off, Jacoby Myers getting that that penalty, the, the uh, taunting penalty right at the start. I get it. Emotions are flaring, but you got to be smarter than that. This team I know is, um, I know it's an emotional team and I know that they're going to really have a lot of chip on their shoulder, but eh, it was just one of the 10 penalties for 97 yards. Uh, really, you know, also the Broncos had 10 penalties for 83 yards. So it wasn't just the Raiders. I think the refs need to just needed to let them play a little bit, but it is what it is there. But, um, you know, also, uh, the Trayvon Morrig, I felt like in coverage, Got lost right away in that first touchdown, uh, and it was, don't get me wrong, he's a good player. It's just getting frustrating. Like, why do we not have Christopher Smith the second out there? Why do we not have, because uh, he got lost in coverage, and he just continues to, um, he'll make tackles in the secondary and all that, but I just, I want a ball hawker, man. I don't care anymore. Just, ugh. Mar Marcus, P Marcus Epps also got beat on that second uh, touchdown there in the red zone. It's just, I understand that red zone concepts are a lot harder, but, you only have this much field. You got to be able to stop somebody. I just I was ready to lose it. Uh, the Marcus Peters call. Uh, I believe it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, illegal contact. I, I, I again, the refs really just needed to let him play after a while, and it just was not a good way all around. Uh, Michael Mara holding the dude literally just put his shoulder into uh, the the defensive end there for the what was it Frank Clark? I just uh, this this was a terrible game. Terrible game for uh, penalties, and then also Tyree Wilson to me. I get it. His, his rookie debut, so I'm not gonna really like go bad on the kid because he. I think there, there's so much to go off of here, uh, and I also uh, I'm also not gonna go off on him because I really don't know and we don't know how much of the game plan was to really just contain Russell Wilson because every time he gets out of the pocket, bad things happen for your defense. So. It just seemed like he was a step slow. Uh, if you watch him, literally watch frame for frame the rest of the D-line and the offensive line against Ty Tyree Wilson. He looked a little slow. I know he's coming back from injury, so I'm going to kind of taper the expectations here. But I'm going to be honest. I was a little disappointed. I thought he was going to go out there uh, and really show a lot of people after he had a really good uh, preseason debut. But overall, again, I'm not going to beat up the kid. I think there's a lot of uh, really good things to build on with him. And I think we're just going to go ahead and see what those uh, end up becoming uh, with a guy like Tyree Wilson. Uh, but that is it. That is our latest edition of standouts and fizz outs for the las vegas raiders versus the denver broncos uh let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below let us know what kind of uh, pop you guys drink what is this coke mountain dew diet doctor thunder i don't care put in the comment section down below let us know uh and like we said hey pop is the greatest thing since sliced bread uh, and let us know what you guys think about our latest edition of standouts and fizz outs for the raiders versus the broncos